morning guys, good morning, and welcome to another edition of Classic British Motoring. I don't have a channel. I just wanted to get out in my car and uh, show you guys what a beautiful car this is and uh, tell you a little bit about it, show you some of the few quirks about it. Let me turn this around here so you can actually see it. This is a 1962 1600 MK2 MGA. Absolute beautiful rendition of this automobile. I just want to show you a few of the interesting features of the car. One of the features of the car is the tonneau cover, which you see here. Uh, it allows the driver to keep the cockpit area covered should there be a downpour. Uh, you won't get the inside wet. It zips halfway down the middle as I have it shown here so that I can actually drive the car but keep part of it on. I could take the other half off as well if I had a passenger. Um, another little quirk about the car Right here is a switch that's the starter switch. You have to turn the key up there, but then you have to come over here and pull this switch to actually start the car. If you want to turn left or right and signal indicate that to other passengers, you have a switch here on the side which you turn from the left for left turning, turn to the right for right turning. And check out these pedals. If you've got a big foot, you're not driving this car. There's the diff distance you've got between the accelerator, the brake, and the clutch. About the width of my hand. And of course, when's the last time you saw a dimmer switch for your headlights? That was up on the firewall. Under the hood, you find a very simple straight line four cylinder engine. Cranks out about 90 horsepower. It's got the ignition coil, the old distributor with points and condenser, and two single barrel carburetors right there, which can be tricky to keep tuned. Another interesting thing about MGAs is right here, bring it in focus, okay right there in the center we're looking at the bottom of the transmission housing and there's a hole in it and this little cotter pin they call it the jiggly pin because it basically just sits there and jiggles around. I don't think I can get my hand up in there. Can't hold the phone and get the camera, get the, uh, get my hand up in there, but it just kind of wiggles around and it basically semi plugs that hole so that dirt can't get up in there, but oil that leaks from the back of the motor casing can collect there in this lower section of the transmission housing and it drips out. Unfortunately, just the way these things are made with the seals they have, they're not very good and there will be some oil leakage. Um, so they figured it's best to have a place for that oil to drain out rather than be slung up onto the clutch pad. So that's why that pin is there and that's why it's covered with oil. And most of the dripping that you get will be from that. Okay, these are the wheels for the MGA. Notice there is a single lug in the middle. It's called a spinner. It has these wings on it. So you can hit the wings with a brass hammer and just spin it off. And it comes off very quickly and the wheel comes right off. Again, this is from the Racing Heritage. Much faster to take a wheel off and change it if you've just got one nut rather than four or five or six. 
for my longtime friend since high school, or actually grade school, uh, Kyle, I have to show this. There's actually a very nice muffler in the correct location on this MGA instead of being found in the trunk. Another interesting fact about the construction of the MGA is that their doors, the boot, which is the trunk lid, and the bonnet, which is the engine lid, were all made out of aluminum. The fenders were steel, and of course the frame, the chassis is steel as well. But the, you have to remember back in 1950s, these cars uh, were coming right out of post-World War II. There was not a lot of steel to be had in England, so they had to ration it out. And uh, I think they probably were figuring uh, if they could uh, cut down on the amount of steel they needed for various parts that didn't have to be structurally strong, uh, they could make more cars and make the steel go a little bit uh, further. But just an absolute beautiful uh, example. Uh, the 1962s was the, actually the last year that they made uh, the MGA. And there are some features on it, like the grill, you'll notice here is stepped back in. The earlier models, the fins of the grill just came straight down to the front. There was no step inside. And of course, the engine size did change in the 60s. Uh, it went to up to a 1600 uh, when the cars were first manufactured. Uh, they were built with 1500 cc size motors. So the 1600 gave it a little more get up and go. But they're just meant to be driven out in the country. 45, 50 miles an hour cruising is just perfect for them. Um, not a super fast car. Uh, it is a fairly easy car to steer, even though it has no power steering. Um, uh, another little quirky feature, it does have telescopic steering wheel. If you happen to be a very short person and you need this wheel to come out to you, you can undo that nut there and the steering column pulls out toward you. Well, I think the best thing to do is just to get in the car and take her for a spin. We've got beautiful country roads here. Uh, kind of give you an idea of what it sounds like, what it feels like to ride in a classic British sports car. So here we are in the MGA. I'm gonna start her up, turn on the ignition, pull the starter. that the designers of the car actually had in mind because you got to remember this car in the 1950s was actually designed to be a race car um, but uh, they had a lot of competition the Austin Healey had just come out and it looks very similar to this one so this car almost didn't get made uh, because the British Motor Corporation which kind of oversees uh, all of the car companies in Britain in the 50s uh, could actually make a decision as to which cars would be made, which ones would not. And the Austin Healey was very popular in its design, so they decided to go ahead with that. But the MG company, Morris Garage, was actually in some financial trouble because sales had fallen off of their T models, the TD and the TF. Uh, so in order to salvage the company, they decided to let them take 
uh, their plans to make the MGA and put it into production. So in 1952, I'm sorry, 1955, they actually started producing the MGAs. And they got the name A because they had decided that they had wiped the slate clean and they would make this be the first in a series of MG cars. So there you have the A. And they actually made it as far as the MGB. Uh, they stopped making A's in 62 and started making the MGB. And they made those till about 1981 or so. steering so you really got to have a good grip on the steering wheel but she handles very nicely center of the steering wheel, most of us are used to the horn being here. It's here. And it could have had a feature of a radio that would have gone here, and your speaker would have been in here. But when these cars came from England to the, reach the dealership in the U.S., that's where they got all the features on them, like the mirrors and the trim packages, the types of wheels they had. Um, a radio or not so the cars were very plain when they left the factory in England okay so there you have it a 1962 MGA super fun car to ride in I hope you enjoyed this as much as I have and maybe I'll see you out on the road take care <laughs>